So welcome to Organic Lawn Care and Gardening That Won't Cost the Earth. Save time, save money, and save nature. Okay, what's going on? Alrighty. Wow. Let me see. There. So how does your grass grow? In a normal season, if we don't do anything to our lawns, it's dormant during cool weather. And then when we start getting warming temperatures, you will see it greening up, you'll see it growing, and you'll see the root development starting in cool weather. Then when we have heat and drought, the grass will go brown in the summertime and it, because it's stressed and even the root system will be stressed and then cooler weather again in the fall and it it starts the growth again and then it goes dormant so the goal for your lawn is to develop a strong and healthy root system like the one on the left most root systems of of lawns are like the one on the right unfortunately but we will remedy that so money and time saving tip number one resist the urge to fertilize your lawn in spring and why is that first of all to understand that you have to understand the composition of fertilizers the abc's or NPKs of fertilizing. So N, if you see, and, and I've got a sample of that bag there, you see uh, it says 3003. The N is 30, the zero is phosphorus, and there's no phosphorus in there, and the K is potash. So the nitrogen is the one that encourages stem and leaf growth. So look at that, it's all that, whereas what we want is the roots to grow. So we don't really want to fertilize in spring because we want, we want the roots to grow, not, not the top. It'll do it all by itself. And then the potassium's important because it helps other nutrients to work within the plant and it improves resistance to pests and diseases. So here are some organic fertilizers and not just for your lawn if you're in, for your gardening we'll talk about vegetables later on but the ingredients come from mineral vegetable or animal sources not from petrochemicals so n again that's the nitrogen is found in blood meal manure fish emulsion and coffee grounds if you make your own have organic coffee you just save those coffee grounds and put them on organic of course and then p is your bone meal and eggshells and again very simple to save your eggshells when i have a whole dozen i put them in the toaster oven you need to cook them to make sure that there's no salmonella so once they're cooked you can just grind them up in your coffee grinder and add it to your coffee grounds and you've got your your mm -hmm. nitrogen and your uh, uh, phosphorus and then your potash you get from wood ashes and kelp now uh, kelp is seaweed and that's great but wood ashes if you perfectly fine from your fireplace as long as you have natural wood and not those artificial logs that are full of chemicals that make them burn so proper wood you can add so those that's uh, something to look out for and they're different brands earth worm casings are also very good so let's see now here's the next thing aeration you're dying to get out there okay you can, if you have, and especially in Richmond Hill, if you have heavy clay soils, they tend to get really compacted. And aeration is really handy for that type of soil and also if you're getting your lawn off chemicals. So as you can see by the diagram, aeration removes plugs of soil and allows the flow of air and water. And that is really handy for as I say heavy soils and in early spring or fall you can do that you can rent an aerator or hire a professional 
it's probably better to hire a professional because I rented a narrator one and it ran away from me and it went downhill and it nearly landed up in the lake. <laughs> so <laughs> hire a professional. And then the plugs are just left on the, on the lawn and then they just decompose. So money saving tip number two, avoid synthetic fertilizers, as we've said, they're petrochemicals. So what can we use instead? Try the three C's, compost, clippings, and clover. So compost, there is a fabulous compost. Whoever did that is, it needs an award, but compost is a soil amendment. It adds macro and micronutrients it improves root development and soil structure. So you can top dress your lawn. If your lawn looks pretty sick, you can top dress with a half inch layer once or twice a year. So one yard of compost will cover a thousand square feet. So where to buy? Look for organic compost at our local grocery stores and hardware stores. If any of you are anywhere near Richmond Hill, Oak Ridge's food market uh, has fabulous organic compost, manure, and soil. But all hardware stores and, and garden centers have it this time of year, but the organic one's the one you want. And then duck dirt, we have duck compost, which is hormone and antibiotic free up in Aurora. And then, you know, we have our yard waste that gets picked up. Well, Miller Compost also makes uh, compost from yard waste or make your own. That's a handsome looking uh, composter there. And they're easy to get it at your local uh, municipal offices. So what you you might need to do is, you see, sometimes that happens. Every year, grass plants die and leave bare patches. That's very normal. And if you don't fill in the bare patches, Mother Nature will. And sometimes she fills it in very beautifully, but other times it's not so nice. So a thick lawn will outcompete weeds. So here you go. Overseeding. Typical grass mixtures include Kentucky bluegrass, perennial ryegrass, and fine fescue. But for your lawn to develop that big healthy root system, you want to overseed in either spring or fall. And I've done it just before Halloween one year, and it was fabulous. It came up. But what you want to do is avoid Kentucky bluegrass. So little, as little or no, no Kentucky bluegrass, and then you're going to have a very strong lawn. So what you can do is add a small amount of clover seed to the grass mix. Now what you've done, if you've just put your compost down, that half inch of compost, you can just throw your, your, your over seed right over the compost all in one day. And so you need about four to six pounds for a thousand square feet. And this is the one we recommend, Ecolon. It's been formulated here in Ontario, and it does grow in any conditions. It's highly drought tolerant, but it has a blend of seven native fine fescues. And that is the key, no Kentucky bluegrass. Slow grow, gr growing grass, you can, no fertilizing or watering or, you know, it will have a deep root system, but the mowing or leave unmown for free flowing carpet effect. And so here you go, the clover I said that to add a little bit, it fixes nitrogen in the soil like farmers, farmers use, you know, when they do crop rotation, they put in red clover as it just restores the, the soil. So you can have one third of your lawns uh, nitrogen needs are met by clover. So if you have a bit in the lawn, that's fabulous. But in the past, clover was very desirable, but all the chemical companies said, oh no, brainwashed us to think that we need a monoculture of just grass. So we killed off all the clover and then we had to buy their fertilizers because we didn't have the nitrogen. So we don't 
you know, monocultures are not good in, in society and they're not good in nature either. So a little bit of clover and here's an example of this was one was backwards this picture, but you see it was there's some construction and it all looked a bit ratty. And there's 10 days later with the clover and the grass. And one of the things that's good about clover in a lawn, when we have the heat and drought, the, the grass will go completely brown and dormant, but the clover stays green. And the other thing, the clover, it's white clover that's the one to actually get, not the red clover that farmers get, but it tends to bloom and I kind of leave it. And you should see all the all the bees that, that go to it and you see all this blooming clover in your lawn. It looks quite nice. So money and time saving tip number three is to mow properly. So what we're doing is we're scalping the lawn. We need to leave a higher height. So cut to a height of three inches. Cutting too low, it stresses out the roots and it heats up the soil. So longer grass also shades out weeds and keep your blades sharp. I hope everyone has one of these instead of one of those big gas things, because actually for the data, uh, if you use one of those gas lawn mowers for one hour, it's the same as driving your car 500 kilometers from Toronto to Montreal. That is the pollution from one gas uh, lawn mower. So that's the thing to convert to. And then you can get that sharpened at farmers markets or, um, you know, just Google where to where to sharpen rotary lawn mowers and it'll all come up. So clippings save time and money do you remember i said leave the clippings on your lawn once you mow i mean i see people with those big yard waste bags raking it up and i say why are you doing that it actually provides another third of your nitrogen to your lawn so and it decomposes within 72 hours it's gone it's gone and it's serving your lawn and it does not create thatch so what's thatch? Okay. Heavy fertilizing and high maintenance causes a very thick uh, layer of dead fibrous material right at the soil surface. And that actually prevents air and water from getting into the soil. So you want to really remove thatch and uh, what you can do and unfortunately it is if you've used a lot of, you know you've had a landscaper come and put fertilizers on it it's uh it's not desirable so if you go on to an organic lawn uh care program you won't have so much that but the, the whoops the best thing okay how oh, what's happening here so the best thing you can do why can't i what you need to do is take a, I don't know, <laughs> I'm stuck, here we go. What you can do with the, with the uh, thatch is just have a heavy rake and rake it up. So money and time saving tip number four is smart watering. Now lawns only need one inch of water a week and you never ever water in spring because the soil is waterlogged and so you want to water in the morning when you do and the reason for that is uh, some people would water at night and then you're going to get if it doesn't dry and it's humid you might get mildew that will spread to your tomato plants and to your lilac bush and how do you get okay everyone wants to know how do i know when i have one inch of water okay you get a tin of tuna and you eat the tuna and then you put the tin on your lawn and you put on your sprinkle and you say okay it's 10 past 7 in the morning and you and it's working away and then you look okay 7 30 i've got my one inch so you know once a week you put on that sprinkler for 20 minutes and that's all you need so you have to abide by the town watering restrictions and usually with all the drought we have we we have to abide by that now, the other thing is grubs prefer lawns that are watered daily. So there's one way of avoiding grubs. 
So money and time saving tip number five, don't beat your head against a brick wall. I mean, grass will not grow everywhere. It needs at least in some cases, four hours of sun and deep soil in tricky situations, try other plants. Like if you're lucky enough to have beautiful mature trees where it's very shady, there's a lot of root competition there and grass doesn't like that. But look at that. You've got, in this picture, you've got ferns, you've got Canada anemone, you have some mayapple, you have some uh, looks like violets. Like this is a lot nicer than some grass that's struggling under trees. So look at other things that you can plant instead when, when in tricky situations. And then, I mean, when I, I was asked so many times, how do I get rid of my moss? Like, I think that is, I mean, moss is revered. This, these photos are from Japan and they revere moss and, you know, they if they if you get moss that grows in naturally you want to actually encourage it and it's lovely in shady places but we also have to ask ourselves why did we plant grass in the first place why it was for pasture now how many people still have cows and sheep in their backyards i don't think there's a lot of us that do and so but we haven't rethought the whole lawn thing you know, we still have the same concept when we needed pasturage. So it's time to rethink it a bit. And so here's natural, just little oases in the backyards, natural, a little bit of lawn, but really quite restful from the hubbub. So naturalizing and some wild uh, perennials and so forth that instead of all lawn, and that's, that's completely no lawn. And then here's looking at what we can put in to support pollinators. There's a, that yellow calms St. John's wort. There's one bee on it, that yellow shrub at the top, but there are dozens of bees on it all summer long. And of course, black-eyed Susan and echinacea. So if you start replacing some of your lawn by planting for pollinators and then that's a butterfly bush which of course lots of people like it that one isn't native but uh look at, look for native plants at the first and then you know go from there and then kids bees butterflies and other pollinators love it wild so a little bit you know a little messy is good actually that's when you'll get tree frogs and you'll get chipmunks and little creatures and here's a, a a back garden that's this this must be paradise for pollinators uh very little lawn and lots of natural spaces and wildflowers now if you get some coming up in your lawn and you leave them I think that looks quite nice and you can just cut them with hedge clippers after blooming. So nature will fill the space if you just leave things alone and that's you've got goldenrod and in the bottom photo two types of asters. Uh, and so you know you leave it alone and you'd be surprised the lovely things that just blow in. And so how dare we call these plants weeds? You know, goldenrod is, I mean, people think it causes allergies, but it actually doesn't. Goldenrod has a sticky pollen. And so, but it happens to bloom at the same time when you do get a lot of allergies, but it doesn't. And the other one with the tiger, black tiger swallowtail is Queen Anne's lace. So, but these are examples of nauseous weeds that we want to be careful uh, to avoid. And the ragweed, that photograph was actually taken right at the super mailbox. And because it grows in disturbed uh, at ground and it does actually, you can see that it's green. So insects don't come to pollinate it. So it's windblown. So that's that's the plant that will cause allergies and it and it blooms at the same time as goldenrod. And then poison ivy is our native plant and, and it's native in Vermont as well. <laughs> but it, it grows in forests and there's a lot of it in our forests and we want to avoid that. But the culprit that's really 
the bad one that we have to deal with is garlic mustard. It's an invasive alien that actually, it's it's called a allopathic. That means it uh, it destroys the beneficial fungus that the trees rely on in a forest. And it, so it weakens the trees. So when you're out for a walk, always bring a bag, bring up a plastic bag and pull this plant out. It is a good edible. In fact, that's how it got here uh, from settlers. It was called a pot herb, but it makes great garlic must garlic pesto. So you can pull it and make pesto, but never put it in your compost. It has to go in the garbage because the seeds will spread everywhere. So keep an eye out for it and and gather it. It's it it's out in the forests or, or even in your gardens, but it's around the middle of May that it's very active. So let's talk about some of the problems. So the crabgrass that we we solve that by just leaving your grass grow three inches. Cra Crabgrass is very flat, and so if you shade it out, it'll disappear in a couple of years. Your chinch bugs, they love it in thatch. So if you get rid of your thatch, you won't have a chinch bug problem. And your grubs, they love, they're two inches below the ground, right at the roots of your Kentucky bluegrass. So if you get rid of your Kentucky bluegrass and have the fescues that are longer roots, you won't have grubs. Then we have dandelions. Well, maybe we could have dandelion festivals because honestly, the dandelions that were so maligned, I think people are starting to realize that they do have a place like right now in Canada, there's not a lot of blooming plants and that's the pollinators and the bees rely on them because it's one of the first things to bloom. So we're starting to appreciate dandelions a little bit more than we used to and we're not, you know, maligning them. In fact, town, well, oops, sorry, town bylaws say don't call us and complain about dandelions because we're not going to respond. So we have to be a little more relaxed about our, our outlook on dandelions. And actually it's a very good, you know, the leaves Italians really know that you clean your liver in the spring and you'd see them picking, you have to pick the leaves before it blooms because then they get very bitter. But you pick those leaves, you don't have to pay for salad greens and you you can clean your liver and, and it's delicious. <laughs> So how about veggies? So in fact, these pictures are all like front yard gardens in Toronto. So you can get rid of some of the lawn and grow veggies. And sometimes, you know, it, it like to me, that's a lot more attractive than lawn. I don't know about you, but I think it looks, it looks, and look at this one. This, this is a garden in Drummondville, Quebec. And sometimes, you know, your shady part is in the back. So your sunny part is in your front. So these people, oh, there was a cry and hue about this. And there were all kinds, I think the world, some huge organization all over the world came in when people protested about this garden and the whole, all the bylaws have changed since this garden. And now, you know, front yard vegetable gardens are accepted, but they had a big fight on their hands. Can you believe that? But I, and they, they've got some plants mixed in with them to make it look attractive, some flowers. So, but anyway, so we're going to be the pioneers, right? <laughs> so here are some, of the um, choose organic plants and seeds and there's a nice selection even the hardware store if you're in canada canadian tire has uh, the uh, mackenzie organic seeds uh, and have some fun with some of those and try different things so even if uh, this is one thing that we're we're adamantly against is never ever use roundup i see my neighbors doing it with a child that's running barefoot and i say you know it is so toxic it endangers human and animal health it contaminates soil water and air it destroys beneficial soil organisms and it triggers many diseases in plants 
unfortunately you can still buy it at the hardware store which is ridiculous because it's something that uh, is is the worst thing that can happen to us so one of the things that we say is work in harmony with nature and this is a fantastic book garden bugs of ontario and that would be fine for northern uh, usa as well but it's it it's a good garden has a healthy balanced ecosystem so don't think of bugs as alien species that should be crushed or sprayed with pesticides Many common bugs found in your garden are essential predators necessary to keep plant attacking insects under control. So this book is fantastic. It, ha it has biological control and you can identify them and it shows, it even tells you what, which natural predators that some of these bugs will uh, attract. So uh, it's a fabulous book. So here you might want to plant uh, berry trees and bushes for birds. I don't think any of these will grow in California. Well, maybe the mountain ash might, but that's a native a showy mountain ash uh, service berry. They're all native uh, to Eastern North America. The winter berry is one you need a male and a female. It's, uh, it's beautiful, wet. And then chokeberry, which you can make, they make jam out of it in Newfoundland. <laughs> and uh, so this really, if you want to start really having a garden for nature, think about, uh, about some of these uh, berry uh, trees and bushes for birds. And if you do think, consider getting a mountain ash, get a native one, there are two. We have the showy mountain ash and the American mountain ash. Don't get the European one because actually the form of our native ones is much nicer. It's not so rigid and columnar, it's more uh, spreading. So here's some fun. If you get into your veggie gardens, learn about crop rotation. And this is something you can Google and get off the internet, but just like farmers do, they rotate because if you have the same thing in your garden every year, the same place, you're going to have a problem. So some of these things, so crop rotation is, is really, uh, and I'll show you another picture and I'll explain a problem that I had, a personal problem. But you get this chart and then you remember what you have to do is make sure that you do a plan for your pots or your garden and think, God, what did I put there? You might not remember. So do a plan so you do remember. And here's another thing. Companion planting is very, very good idea. Like what, what things love, you know, peas and basil. I mean, uh, 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 tomatoes and basil. So... Uh, look at, get this off the internet and just remember what you plant together and what you don't plant and then you'll have more success in your garden. So one of the things I always put in are marigolds because uh, first of all they do repel aphids and mosquitoes and cabbage moths but they, uh, they the bees just love them so it's a victim very nice plant to have interspersed in that garden in Drummondville had some around it helps to keep insects uh, uh, at bay and so here's something why don't you try vertical gardening so this is um, you can see that there's like an obelisk with the with the squash <laughs> going up it because it's very tiny and and there's the scarlet runner beans and that's something actually I will tell you that that is a photo of my tiny 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 back garden but I I planted the scarlet runner beans basically it's for the hummingbirds I have to say because I can see them coming every morning and afternoon and evening and um, but the thing is what is that it's a legume and what does a legume do it fixes nitrogen in the soil so what would happen after a few years, I found that I was getting a lot of leaves and no, no beans. So you see the crop rotation because you've got too much nitrogen. So what I did, I planted 
uh, perennial herbs and in the spring I put spinach right at the base so that's all foliage to absorb all that extra nitrogen so that's what you can do if you're stuck and you can't rotate a crop uh, you can you can do things like that put something in that will that's leafy that will eat up all the nitrogen and that that squash oh, there's a funny story about that squash <laughs> and if you do plant squash you you have to take a q-tip and pollinate because there's only there's only one it's only the squash bee that pollinates it so you can take the male and female plants uh, uh, flowers and pollinate it but I had these those little uh, pumpkins, those lovely little pumpkins you get in October. They're actually edible, not the ones that are sprayed. And I thought, oh, I'll, I'll keep a seed and I'll plant it. But with squash, it never stays true. And I landed up getting three spaghetti squashes instead, <laughs> no pumpkins. So if you save a squash seed and you plant it, it'll be a surprise of what you can get. But one of the things too with kids, um, you know, the things that kids love, if you plant sugar snap peas, you'll never have to cook it because the children, you go, they'll go and pick it and they'll eat it as crudite raw and you'll never, you'll never have a sugar snap pea to cook because the kids will love it. Or a little potato, you know, if you buy organic potatoes, you'll have sprouts on them. Put the potatoes in a pot uh, and with if you have any kids and then what you have to do is make sure you leave potatoes until all the foliage is completely brown then you put a piece of plastic sheeting and with with your kids or grandkids and dump the whole pot out so it's easy and believe me the grandkids just love to find all these little potatoes so you'll find three or four pounds of potatoes if you just plant one little potato so that's sort of a fun thing with kids or grandkids to get them interested in vegetables and so there's container plants too if you don't have much there's that's an eggplant actually that lovely mo flower and then okra and then herbs in the in those planters so you don't need to have a lot of space uh, to garden you can you know you can have some fun in pots and then you have to consider weeding as a meditation and it can be very relaxing actually so it's a mindfulness activity and so you can embrace the healing power of soil and love those microbes and i would definitely do it i never do use it with garden gloves uh, because you have to feel that soil and all that goodness in it and in fact there there was there's you know they're finding that out with kids there's even a book written called let them eat dirt that we were too sanitized and we need to uh you know we need to get get our hands dirty again so in the fall leave the leaves so you chop up large leaves if you have a maple or oak run a lawnmower over them so they decompose uh, more quickly over the winter but this provides habitat for beneficial insects and pollinators and leaving flower heads and you'll see even you'll see even little holes in your garden where the bees actually nest so leaving flower heads too is seeds uh, for birds during the winter time but in the spring don't be don't rush to clean them up because they're all still under there and there's even a whole campaign starting and I think it started in Minnesota but it's like no mo may <laughs> so so they're saying leave it so let everything get going because they're all you know it's our ecosystem that we usually try to destroy but we want to keep it so leave the leaves in the fall chop them up and then don't be too hasty to clean up in april do it at the end or do it now for next year okay so this is who we are, York Region Environmental Alliance, and you're welcome to go to our website and explore. You can actually follow us on Facebook because we, we do post a lot of things like this, also environmental, but you can subscribe to our e-news 
we send it out quarterly, but you'll find it informative uh, if you, uh, we don't harass you just four times a year, but please uh, stay in touch and, and enjoy gardening. <laughs>